After having its first viewing at Anime Expo 2018 and then getting a Blu-ray release in 2019, Casa Sun and Morning Glories is now on High Dive, opening it up for people who can't or won't buy physical but do like legal streams. The wider accessibility is great news, as this OVA is a very good adaptation of one of my favorite Yuri manga. It's very pretty and the characters are cute, yes, but it's not just that. The way it approaches the cliché end of high school scenario makes it both very original and true to life. Instead of building up to the love confession for most of the story, Kasa-san stands out by starting just after the love confession. It seems weird, but it works because the show accurately depicts that transition period between single and not. Yamada is nervous and can't believe that her crush likes her back, nearly fainting in the very first scene. While Kasa looks cool and unaffected to Yamada at first, we know and she discovers that that's not accurate. They're both just stumbling through their first days and trying to figure out what to do, what they're comfortable with, and Kasa is just as prone to feeling like she's going to die of embarrassment. Most romance stories either end on the main couple getting together or shortly after, or end the first or second arc on that and then throw some external problems at them. And that's fine. I love those. But Kasa-san feels real because its problems are real and they arise as a normal part of a new relationship. The issues in Kasa-san are things that anyone might deal with starting off. Wondering what normal relationship things you should start doing, like making your new partner lunch and deciding on dates. Worrying about physical affection and when you're both ready for what. Body image issues and wondering if your partner will still want you. Even just the awkward transition period where you're both trying to fit your new relationship into your existing lives. And while it's not harsh and doesn't depict blatant prejudice, Kasa-san also feels too grounded in reality to assume that the main characters aren't facing any problems for being girls who like girls. The show walks the line being neither a problem story, where the main conflict is dealing with a social issue like homophobia, or a gaytopia, where those issues don't exist. Nothing in Kasa-san is explicit about it, but the little digs society takes at you are sewn into the fabric of the show. The OVA begins, after all, with the phrase, we're both girls, but... like Yamada has to justify the fact that they're girlfriends. Kasa and Yamada refer to one another as friends around other friends and family, and Yamada is reluctant to admit it when someone figures it out. On top of that, the second half of the OVA is all about how everyone around the two of them wants them to go to different universities in different places to secure them each a good future. The fact that they'd be separated, possibly forever, is shrugged off as a fact of life. And while their parents and teachers don't know the girls are an item, it's not likely that much would change if they did. Kasa and Yamada are just barely 18, so any authority around them would see they're choosing a romantic relationship over the education path they're being guided onto and say, you're throwing your lives away. And let's not mince words. While that could happen to anybody, it's especially harsh because they're lesbians. See, there's a cultural idea that women loving women is something you're supposed to grow out of, that it's immature and foolish to cling to. You can see it not just in Japan with Class S, but elsewhere. For instance, the idea of a lug, someone who settles down with a man after a youth of wild experimentation. Yamada's friend Mikawa, the only one who knows they're together, tells Yamada not to hold out hope. She says Yamada has to face reality and see that they'll go to separate cities, they'll naturally drift apart, and Kase will find someone new. And while Yamada assumes that would be a new girlfriend, this idea that she needs to grow up and face the facts seems to insinuate Mikawa might have intended otherwise. Mikawa thinks she's doing Yamada a favor by bursting her bubble, but all it does is give Yamada nightmares. The physical setting of the show is full of symbolism to underline this, and not even just the floreography that gets spelled out for you by the characters. There are other things too. When Yamada's parents' choice of school for her first comes up, the people discussing it are silhouettes, less friends and more like a faceless world pushing her life in a direction she doesn't want. When we turn away from them and back to Yamada, behind her, we see a notice of a showing of the 1971 film Melody, a movie about elementary schoolers who decide they want to get married. Of course, that's not the same as high school third years wanting to keep dating after they graduate, but even if the parents, teachers, and community knew Kasa and Yamada's relationship and the nature of their objections, they wouldn't care they'd still view those objections as rash, childish, and unreasonable. And before you ask, Melody was surprisingly popular in Japan, more so than in the UK where it was made, so the viewers would generally be expected to understand the reference. That said, are Yamada and Kasa being unreasonable? Certainly, 
As painful as it is to admit, especially at that age, it is often a bad idea to scuttle your post-secondary plans to preserve a high school romance. Not nearly as many of those last forever in real life as they do in anime. But it still makes sense to cheer for them because many of us have been there, where a love no one understands versus the path that was chosen for us does feel like the end of the world. That's the other thing. Neither of them is trying to give up their own dreams. Yamada's university was chosen by her parents because it would be convenient for them. Kase, as the star of the track team, was encouraged to apply for a big city athletic scholarship to make the school look good, and when she tries to back out, her coach hauls her into the principal's office to pressure her into taking it. When they try to stay together, Yamada and Kase aren't throwing away the futures they wanted, but defying the ones the previous generation wrote for them. And if you don't see the text and the subtext with that one, I don't know how to help you. There are a lot of great recent romance anime, ranging from fluff to drama, but Kasa-san and Morning Glory stands out because it feels honest in how grounded it is. The shows that go all in on genre tropes are great, some of them, but Kasa-san shows a couple with realistic, awkward stumbling blocks in establishing their relationship when the world doesn't seem to care. It's one of my favorite yuri, and now that it's more accessible, I hope more people will watch it and feel the same. This is Secret Identity Studio, and now if only Zexies would adapt the rest of the manga. I mean, with how long the line was to see it at AX, you'd think they would.